What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Step into my classroom, pull out a chair and make yourselves at home. Now, today we're going to be going over integrated writing, integrated essays, and the topic is Marco Polo. Now let's look at the introduction paragraph of the reading passage. Don't forget that you always should read from the bottom up. So let's look at this part right here. It appears that the skeptics are correct. Indeed, it is likely that Marco Polo never ventured to China, nor did he engage in any of the actions he took credit for. Now, you should have noticed two things here. The reading's opinion is that Marco Polo never went to China, and the topic is whether or not Marco Polo went to China. Actually, three things. The last thing that you should notice is that the lecturer is going to say that Marco Polo went to China. Okay? So, you can infer two extra things by realizing what the reading's opinion is. So altogether, you should notice and have information about three things, all right? By the time you're done reading one sentence. Okay, now let's take a look at how I decided to type that in my sample essay. So the topic is whether or not Marco Polo traveled to China where he claims to have spent 17 years of his life and later wrote about his journey to the Far East. Now, where did I get the 17 year part, 17 years part? right here okay so what happened is by the time i was done typing the sample essay i noticed that i only spent about 12 minutes so i had eight minutes to play with so what did i choose to do i chose to add more information that'll help improve the quality of my essay and thus enable me to get more bonus points that sounds logical right so if you have a lot of time left don't just move on to the independent essay task think about what else you could do so that you can guarantee yourself a higher score. All right, now let's take a look at the first body paragraph. There are several supposedly original accounts of his journey. They are written in Italian, Latin, and Old French. However, each account differs in its details, which has raised questions. All right, that's all you need. So there are many different versions of his journey, and they are all different in details. That's a huge problem. Okay, let's look at the uh, sample essay. There are a number of supposedly organic versions of his adventure in, in China, which are written in different dialects, such as Italian, Latin, and Old French. Also, the fact that each of these accounts has dissimilar details is what raises questions about the legitimacy of his trip to China. Okay, so I did some paraphrasing and also spiced it up. All right, now let's look at the second body. Another criticism is that Polo failed to mention ba many basic facts about China known to have been true during the time he was supposedly there. He never mentioned the practice of binding women's feet or tea drinking. Okay, I think that's all we need. All right. Now, this is what I typed for that body paragraph. Marco Polo could not have been to China as he didn't state some obvious facts about the country. That's simple enough, and that's all you need. Because as you can see... Uh, what I wrote for the lecture is quite extensive, or yeah, up to in Persian. It's really long, and I don't think I have to make this body paragraph even longer by adding more details from the body paragraph of the reading passage. All right, now let's look at the last body paragraph. One of the most telling facts is that Marco Polo's name appears nowhere in the recorded history of China in that period. Considering his claim to have been a close friend and ambassador to the ruler Kublai Khan and a frequent court visitor, this is incredibly surprising. All right. So I think that's all we need here. Okay, let's look at my sample essay. The fact that Marco Polo's name is nowhere to be seen in the written history of China at that time is a huge contradiction. Due to the fact that Polo had an intimate relationship with the ambassador to the ruler Kublai Khan, his name should have been printed in the Annals of Chinese History if his history, if his story were true. Okay, now, um, Annals, this word means records, all right? Okay, so once again, I did some paraphrasing and jazzed it up a bit. All right, guys. Taking notes on the reading passage is really, really important because if you do it properly, before the lecture even begins, you should have 50% of, of your integrated essay completely organized. Now, so take a look at my sample essay. The bold sentences are the information that I got from the reading passage. 
And right now it doesn't look like half because I wrote a lot for the lecture. And once again, my sample essays aren't going to be what's expected of you. This is the answer sheet to this particular integrated writing task. So don't get a misunderstanding of this. You don't have to write this much of the lecture's information. So it looks less than 50% because I wrote a ton of information from the lecture. Understand? All right. Now that we're done with the reading passage, let's listen to the lecture. Listen to a lecture on the topic you just read about and complete the note diagram. The controversy surrounding the authenticity of Marco Polo's story about his life in China is based on simple misunderstandings and misinterpretations of facts. Polo indeed traveled to China and then wrote an accurate account of his journey, which became one of the most important books in history. After returning to Europe, Polo spent some time as a prisoner of war. The first account of his travels was written by a fellow prisoner, a romance writer, who told his tale in Old French. This accounts for the stories of a romance novelist writing fables. Years later, Polo wrote his own story in Italian. This was translated into Latin and later retranslated in Italian once the original manuscript was lost. This explains the many small discrepancies between the texts, a major source of the controversy. Many critics note that Polo failed to record many common Chinese things, like tea drinking and the Great Wall. However, Polo spent most of his time in the North, where tea wasn't often consumed. It's also possible he never saw the Great Wall since he entered China from the West, yet the Wall mostly faces North. And keep in mind that the Great Wall wasn't the finished version that exists today. It was actually smaller and included many sections that had eroded or disappeared and were later built after Polo's departure. Polo never learned Chinese because he didn't need to. Kublai Khan provided Persian translators since he was fluent in that language. He often even used Persian names to describe Chinese places. As for his absence from any Chinese books, this may be related to the fact that he used a different form of his name in Chinese or Mongolian, or simply that he wasn't important enough to merit the honor of being mentioned. All right, now let's take a look at the lecturer's information, the lecturer's opinion. Controversy based on misunderstandings and misinterpretations of facts because traveled to China. So the lecturer is claiming that Marco Polo indeed went to China and that the reading passage is misunderstanding what's going on. The first argument says, after returning to Europe, prisoner of war, so fellow prisoner wrote first account in Old French. Years later, wrote in Italian, translated to Latin, and retranslated to Italian because lost. Discrepancies. Discrepancies means differences. All right, so the first argument basically is stating that Marco Polo was in prison for several years after coming back from China. So a fellow prisoner, strangely enough, a fellow prisoner had to write the first version of his journey to China. And this prisoner decided to wrote it, write it in Old French. I don't know why. Don't ask me and don't be curious about it. That's what happened, according to the lecture. Um, and then after when Marco Polo came out of prison, he obviously probably wanted to write his own version and he wrote it in Italian, uh, which, was re which was translated to Latin because of his popularity and then retranslated to Italian because Marco Polo lost the original manuscript that he created. He was absent-minded. And um, as you know, it's impossible to completely translate another language into a different language. So there are going to be small differences that occur and accumulate, get bigger and bigger as there are more translations. All right. So that's the first argument. Now, the second argument is saying that spent time in North, tea not consumed, not see Great Wall because entered from the West, W, the West and face North. Not finished and smaller, later built after departure. Not learn Chinese because not need to and translators. Okay, so Marco Polo supposedly spent most of the time in China in the north. Okay, 
most of his time in the northern region of China, in which tea wasn't consumed. And uh, it's likely that Marco Polo did not see the Great Wall because he entered from the west, whereas the Great Wall mostly faces the north. Uh, and back then, the Great Wall was not finished and much smaller. And a lot of the parts were built after uh, Marco Polo departed from China. He also did not have to learn Chinese because Kublai Khan provided him with translators on a regular basis. All right, now the third argument. Used different forms of name in Chinese or, Mo or Mongolian and not important enough to be mentioned. Okay, now the third argument is saying that Marco Polo probably used different forms of his name. Now, my name in Korean is much different from the, uh, the, my name in English because the English alphabet and the Korean alphabet are completely different. They don't resemble each other at all. So if you were to read a Korean history textbook, a hundred years later, and, it, and if I'm important enough to be mentioned in it, you probably would not recognize my Korean name, right? And that's what's happening here, or that's what the professor is saying is happening here. All right, now that we know what I took notes on, let's go back to my laptop and look at the finished project. All right, I've now highlighted the lecture's information, so let's start looking at the lecture's opinion. The listening adamantly delineates that, the authenticity of Marco Polo's voyage to China is based on misunderstandings and misinterpretations of facts since Polo indeed traveled to China and wrote an accurate account of his journey due to several compelling reasons. All right, now, I think it's safe to say that this sentence is much better than any sentence I would have written if I happened to miss the lecturer's opinion in the lecturer's introduction. So start paying attention from the moment you hear the reading's opinion in the beginning part of the lecture because once the reading's opinion is mentioned the next step the next stage is definitely going to be the professor's opinion usually following a word like however all right now let's look at the first argument the lecture offsets these points by declaring that marco polo actually spent some time as a prisoner of war when he returned from china as a result, the first version of his voyage was written by a fellow prisoner in Old French, explaining and debunking the possibility that a romance writer authored his story. Years later, Polo was released from jail and wrote his own story in Italian, which was translated to Latin for other readers. However, the Latin version of his journey had to be retranslated into Italian due to the fact that the original copy that Marco Polo wrote was lost. In other words, discrepancies in details and text were inevitable due to such circumstances. All right, so I added the last part, um, were inevitable due to such circumstances because I know that this will happen if you translate one text over and over again into different languages. All right, now let's look at the second argument. The professor in the lecture further asserts that Marco Polo didn't record some common things about China in his story since he spent most of his time in the northern region of China, where tea wasn't consumed. Furthermore, Polo didn't see the Great Wall since he entered China through the west, whereas the Great Wall primarily faces the north. Moreover, the Great Wall wasn't in its final, final form when Polo stayed in China, owing to the fact that it was much smaller, included sections that eroded, and was later built after Polo departed China. Last but not least, Marco Polo didn't have to learn Chinese since Kublai Khan provided him with Persian translators and he was fluent in Persian. Now, another thing that you should always try to do is utilize your memory. Now, once you're done taking notes on the lecture, don't just jump into typing the essay right away. I want you guys to spend at least a minute looking over your lecture's information so that you can organize it right away and add more information that you still remember but didn't have a chance to write down. This small step, this small one minute process can make it possible for you to grab way more bonus points. So don't skip it, okay? All right, now let's look at the last argument. The speaker in the lecture counters these indications by insisting that Marco Polo's name was most likely absent in Chinese history books because he used a different form of his name in Chinese or Mongolian while he resided in the country. 
In addition to this, perhaps he simply didn't have the merit to be acknowledged in the records of China's history because he wasn't important enough to be mentioned. So, who's to say that Marco Polo was such an important person to be mentioned in Chinese history? After all, he's not Chinese. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think he really did anything to influence the country, so maybe he just wasn't important, to, important enough to be mentioned. That could be a possibility. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, please don't get the wrong idea that you need to write this much to get a good score on the integrated writing essay. This is not necessary. Um, if I were to give you a percentage, and this is from experience, okay? This is from the grades that all of my students have been getting and have gotten. Uh, if you're able to organize roughly 70% of the lecturer's information, you're gonna be in the ideal position to get the grade that you want from the integrated essay task, all right? So don't overburden yourself, don't stress yourself out, just try to catch roughly 70% of the lecture's information. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video in which we're gonna be focusing on independent writing. So if you would like to share some topics that you want me to go over, feel free to mention them in the comment section below. All right, peace out.